creating tremendous pressure for the price of one little pawn. So this is already better for black. Black can even try to play the move f5 and then knight f6. This is probably even better. But anyway, this just gives you an idea of how dangerous the positions are. The move here for white is knight takes d5, and after queen takes e4, bishop e3. This is the absolute main line, and like I said, we will definitely be talking about this in a future video. Here, my opponent played queen takes f6, and after knight takes f6, here we start to see that even though black has given up the bishop pair and control over the dark squares, black is ahead in development and ready to play the d5 pawn break. So the basic argument in the Lowenthal is that I give up the bishop pair, but I should be able to play d5. And the tug of war that's going to go on in the middle game and end game is going to be what's stronger, white's bishop pair or black's pawn majority in the center? And this is not an easy question to answer, but from my experience, I do not think that black's position is worse at all. For example, in the game, white played knight c3, and now after knight b4, bishop d3, we arrive at the critical position of the queen takes f6 variation. This position has been played hundreds of times. In fact, according to my database, there are no less than 409 games played in this position. And 171 of them featured the move d5. 91 games featured knight takes d3, but I do not think that either of these two moves are particularly good for black. I don't think that they get the most out of the position. D5 would seem to be by far the most natural move, according to what we've just outlined. But the problem with the move D5 is a tactical one. After, let's say, D5 here, white will go E takes D5. And we'll see that even though this looks very tempting, let's say after knight takes d5, knight takes, knight takes. This is the typical Lowenthal endgame that you can expect to get. We cannot consolidate our position as black. For example, after bishop d2, our ideal setup is usually to go bishop e6, f6, king f7, and then bring our rooks to c8 and d8. If black manages to do all of this, black has some serious chances of getting the better position, mainly because it's quite possible that black will carry out a favorable trade. And the most favorable trade is the trade of light squared bishops. Usually black can pursue this with maneuvers like knight e7 and bishop f5. So if black manages to do that, then you'll have the pawn majority in the center and potential for a good knight against bad bishop. Those are the strategic tools that black is operating with. So let's try to achieve that as black, right? Let's say we play the move pawn to f6 and after castle queenside bishop to e6. Well, if white makes waiting moves like king b1 or rook h e1, we're simply going to continue with king f7 and we're going to bring our rooks to the center and everything's a-ok. -okay. But the key setup for white here involves placing the bishops on e4 and on a5. And this is going to make it very difficult for black to actually fight for the only open file, the d file. So for example, after king f7, bishop to a5, I do think that this is a better position for white, of course. Right now, it's not easy to complete our setup. And most importantly, our knight on d5 is under attack. And we do not have a good way of either retreating it or defending it, because if we play knight e7, the b7 pawn hangs, and we can't play rook d8. So this is the central premise of white's queen takes f6. You cannot consolidate your position in the center as black, so you cannot equalize or aspire for an advantage. So black must look for a different way of playing this position. And 
An interesting idea is the move knight takes d3. And after c takes d3, what black would like to argue is that, hey, this pawn on d5 is weak. And if I can get it back, then you're also going to be left with a weak pawn on d3. For example, if I go bishop to f5 and say, hey, I'm attacking your pawn on d3, you better defend it with king to e2. Well, then I can prepare moves like rook d8 and knight takes d5. Here, rook d8 might run into bishop g5, so maybe black should prepare it with h6. This is a very important idea. We'll come back to it, I promise you. And the next move will be rook d8 and knight takes d5, and black should be absolutely fine. But another problem arises here, that against bishop to f5, white has no interest in hanging on to this d3 pawn. White is much more interested in keeping the d5 pawn. And the key move in all of these end games for white is the move bishop to g5, undermining our knight. So the point is that after bishop takes d3, rook d1, the bishop drops back, and after bishop takes, pawn takes. It's true. Black has recovered his pawn, but we have transitioned into a bad endgame where white has this powerful pass pawn on d5, and we have a weakened pawn structure on the king side, which white will easily capitalize on by playing f4 and likely castle king side with tons of pressure on our f file. So this is a nightmare for black, and white is clearly better. So it seems like white is able to create some very serious problems with this simple queen trade. But it turns out that black has some very interesting alternatives here. And the moves b5 have been definitely proposed as interesting alternatives for black. And I do agree that b5 is an interesting move and it's probably enough for black to maintain equality. But I like the move pawn to h6. I think this is a wonderful move because of its simplicity. In all of the lines, it seems like white relies heavily on the bishop g5 move, and h6 simply seeks to avoid it altogether. So there is no good way for white to prevent us from playing the move pawn to d5, right? So that's why we're not really in a hurry to carry it out. So now what can white do here? Can white do anything to really create problems for us? You would think, okay, well, what about a3? Since you're threatening to play d5, let's get rid of that knight on b4, which supports d5. But after knight takes, c takes, even though white has two pieces controlling d5, once again, we encounter the d5 move. And after e takes d5, bishop f5, the difference is there's no bishop g5 anymore. So black is ready to play rook d8, knight takes d5 with a very comfortable game. It could be rook d8, it could be castle queenside, it could be castle kingside and rook fd8. It doesn't matter. As long as a rook gets to d8 and we get that pawn back, we are in good shape. So this is the basic idea of h6. And a3 causes black no problems whatsoever. Um, I've encountered several moves in practice. In this game, my opponent played king e2, which I don't think is a particularly good move. And we'll see why in just a moment. In my file, the main move is bishop e3, and we'll also talk a little bit about bishop d2, because I think those moves are closely related. After bishop e3, this would seem to make little sense, because now we just play the move d5, and after all these trades, takes, 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 the bishop on e3 is under attack, and of course white should not allow this trade. So now the bishop has to go back to d2. That's why I was saying just a moment ago that instead of bishop e3, it would make more sense to put the bishop on d2. But that encounters a problem of its own. Now, here I've played some blitz games where I played the move bishop e6, and eventually I realized that it's quite useful for black to throw in the move bishop g4. But bishop e6 is absolutely fine. Bishop g4 just seeks to provoke a weakening of white's dark squares with the move f3. So I do think that it's slightly more accurate. But let's just take a look at bishop e6. 
which is less subtle but more straightforward. And let's compare it with the idea that we found so challenging a moment ago, right? Once again, if we play the move f6 here, we are going to run into this bishop e4, bishop a5 setup. And that's really the key setup that we always need to be mindful of. We do not want to allow white to place the bishops so aggressively. So the point here, and we'll see why provoking f3 could be quite useful, is that black can castle queenside. This is option number one. And if bishop to e4, well, everything is perfectly under control here. There is a nice move that I like, which is the move pawn to b6, just taking this a5 square under control, preparing king c7, and black is going to be soon ready to, to play f5. For example, after something like b6, rook h e1, pawn to f6, black will play king c7 next with a very solid position. Black also would like to play a5. Notice how black is adopting a very sound strategy regarding the placement of his pawns on the squares of his missing bishop. So that's one option here. The best move for white is probably to start with bishop a5 to prevent b6. And only after something like rook d7, maybe rook h e1 and f6, then bishop to e4. And I spent quite a bit of time looking at this position. I do think that white is slightly better. White has gotten the bishops to the ideal squares, but black has also consolidated the position in the center. So this brings me to black's second idea, which is to play knight to f4. And here, after knight to f4, white doesn't want to give up the bishop for the knight, even though it does double the pawns. I think this is a pretty comfortable position for black. Probably after bishop e4, simply rook b8 and king e7, black will play g5. And I don't really think that black has anything to worry about here. So after knight to f4, white will again put the bishop on e4, try to kick the knight out and bring the bishop to a5. And here we can castle queenside. And we see that the difference is that now bishop a5 is not nearly as annoying because we can simply trade off the rooks and play pawn to f5 and chase this bishop away from the annoying e4 square. So white should probably try to chase this knight away. But now after the move knight e2, king b1, knight d4, we see that black has made some serious progress with the knight and after the move pawn to c3, black's strategy is crowned with this beautiful peace trade, bishop to f5. This is the dream trade for black in all these Lowenthal positions, getting light squared bishops off the board and leaving the knight against the dark squared bishop is really what black is hoping for. So black is absolutely fine here. One little subtlety that I mentioned a moment ago is that throwing in the move bishop g4 can be quite useful. And this is actually a novelty. And the point is that after f3, bishop e6. Now after white castles queenside, for example, the move knight f4 is even stronger because here it's not even possible to go bishop e4. Well, I mean, it's definitely possible, but you always have to worry about your g2 pawn because the bishop is cut off from it. So, for example, after castle queenside, now if g3, check king b1, we don't even have to play knight d4 right away. We can start with f5 and black is doing great. So in any case, bishop g4 is just more of a curiosity than a necessity. Um, black is doing absolutely fine with bishop e6. The point is to put that knight on f4. So 